We are at the halfway point of Midnight Gospel. Let's do episode five. Annihilation of Joy, uh-oh. Oh, it picks up right where we left off. I didn't realize it was supposed to be consecutive days. Rose? Oh no. Rose. Oh no, somebody puked on you. Yep. Coffee. I will make I'm coffee. I'm telling you, we're the same person. Me and Clancy, connected on a spiritual level. Music cured my shepherd's paunch. My Damn, marriage, made him jack dog, somehow. Yeah, of course, he's like a master yeah. music guy. He's good at everything. Editing. Gonna use my music. No, I take it back. A pillar. A pillar. You weren't supposed to see that. That's my soul prison for wayward simulated beings. It's a tower of malfunctioning sims. Joey Diaz character. Order two. Oh, it's the president. <laughs> Ass man. He's still alive. All my friends are here. I'm connecting to these fictional characters on an emotional level and then talking about them as if they're real. Hey, 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 wake up. Wake up. Wake up. What's going on? This is the existential trap of the soul prison. <laughs> I love the style. That was, that was great. That yeah, was it was nuts. Loop. I guess that means you'll be coming along for the ride every time Bob dies. It's nice to meet you, Jason. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, I can feel it. It feels weird. <laughs> It was slightly different that time. All the consciousnesses in the world are connected, like a glowing blue net in infinity. The Hindu view on this is that it's the nodes that are important, the connections between the lines. Those are consciousnesses. Buddha looks at Indra's net, but he says, it's not the nodes, it's the connections. <laughs> cool. All minds are a net. The nodes are important. Each point is God. But then Buddha came along and said, it's not the nodes that are important, it's the connections. And this is part of a grander point about people together make up reality and so therefore all of us are connected. We think that there's something essentially true about reality. You only have the illusion that you're a separate self because it's a point at which a network converges. The way that I've experienced this is on DMT. I did a tremendous amount of DMT um, while uh, engaged in sexual antics with multiple people. Wow. On DMT? What is wrong with you? I find that hard to believe. One thing I've been thinking about recently, and this is a meta comment, we tend to believe people who speak with authority and with confidence. A lot of times people who know the least are the most confident in their knowledge. And they tend to talk in this very like knowledgeable tone when actually they're kind of all over the place and they're not really hitting at meaning or like hitting at value. I mean, I'm probably guilty of that too. I'm very, very distrustful of this guy suddenly on an instinctual level basically the sex part stops during the dmt experience okay but, you know, but in between yeah, you're yeah. having sex buddhism is a hindu heresy and the nepalis merge them both create this like psychedelic megazord oh what and what's that called in, in power ranger i was praying that you had just added to my lexicon <laughs> of uh, some fucking new spiritual term called megazord power rangers yeah the power rangers can be a spiritual experience so action boy now Kick the can. Mr. Spoons. Break it down, Mr. Spoons. And the whole dream of your life that you thought was real was just a dream until you wake up and say, oh yeah, it was just a dream. Personally, I'm skeptical of things that encourage you to deny your biological existence. Again, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, yeah, maybe. I think that it might be more worthwhile to learn how to live as what you are rather than trying to deny your existence and live in kind of this heady world where it's like, well, we're all energy, we're all spirits, life is an illusion. It doesn't do anything for me. I mean, let me know if you feel like I'm missing something. Whatever this experience is, we think it's real and we think that we are somehow inherently real and it's a case of mistaken identity. No, it is, real. it is real. It is real. So from this perspective, it's as real as it gets. Any spiritual practice that's like trying to get to something. Wake up. It's just a game. You're trying to add experience points to a character that doesn't fucking exist. You've been playing this freaking game for like 20 hours straight. I strongly disagree with this guy. I think this is the wrong track. The ideas that the show has been presenting so far have been about reflecting on what you are honestly and accepting that. And then that will set you free and that has a beauty. What he's saying is 
actually a form of denial, I feel. It's denying that you're a biological being, that you're a human, denying that it actually matters, and denying that you can make things better. I think that's the wrong message. Imagine a game. Some people will play really hard and try to win. Other people will say, well, it's just a game, it doesn't matter. Both have their moments. But I think often people who follow the, the path of it's just a game, it doesn't matter, it's, some kind, it's actually a form of sour grapes. It's like life is not working out for them. They don't know how to make their lives better. They don't want to meet suffering. So they just deny the importance of their own lives. So rather than try to meet life and try to make it as good as they can and try to live as a good person, an open, honest human being who experiences things and has joy and pain and suffering and all the range of human experiences, they take the, the stance that, well, we're just not real. For me, that's so deeply unsatisfying. Now, I know this guy is probably not the best representative of this school of thought, so I'm sure that Someone who actually knows a lot about this hearing me talk will be like sickened by what I'm saying because I know so little about it. But there are a lot of people I feel at this level, like they take some aspect of uh, Buddhism, I guess. In a way they're making it superhuman. For them, it's an escape for pain. That's my reading of it. I think rather than trying to deny your own existence, you should try to meet it honestly. This guy contradicts himself because he talks about how people don't realize that trying to attain something spiritually is like grinding in Warcraft. The fact that he's even measuring that as fruitful or not fruitful shows that he thinks about it in those same terms that he's trying to gain too. You can't really get out of that. You can't escape that wanting something from it. Or if you can, it's very difficult and I don't think this guy has gotten there. The fact that everything is permanent is a cause of suffering, Yeah. right? Old age, sickness, and disease, and death. Yeah. Um, Bob, you doing okay, man? <laughs> everything will disintegrate and be gone. And the suffering of that is unbearable. The moment you accept things as they are, you don't need to hope anymore. You realize that where you are is kind of okay. Fuck. Shit. Wait, wait, I think. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's it, that's it, that's it. So he's seeing himself in other people and that's allowing him to overcome his problems and will allow him to survive in this life. And I think that's a good message. There is an important distinction to make though between that concept and what the guy is saying. Because what the guy is saying is that you should see other people as the same as you because we're all a grid of energy. Whereas I think that's actually a very weak way to look at it. I think that more powerful is that you should see other people as the same because actually we're all human beings. Why this denial of humanity? Why must we deny who we are and our physical states? in order to see people as the same as us. I think you can recognize people as being separate from you and still appreciate them. We exist at a functional level. And so I think the key is not to see us as like these, I don't know, astral beings or whatever, but just seeing someone as a human being like you. For me, that's more powerful. I think this is the Buddha who says there are many roads, one path, something like that. The meaning being that there are many ways to kind of come to the same conclusion. So maybe we're doing the same thing in different ways, which is fine. But I don't know why it's, it always touches a sensitive nerve in me when someone tries to deny humanity. And I think if you really want to have open eyes, you have to open your eyes to humanity as well and not create this fantastic picture that we're just spiritual beings without flesh and bodies. Now the hopelessness sounds really rotten when you, when, if you haven't really explored just how much you've been using hope as a flaw. Let go of hope. Let go. All right, so he learned his lesson, so he gets to exit. What was his charisma points? I'm into charisma points in this show, like Dragon Ball Z fans are into power levels. Three charisma! Oof, it's over three. Watching my cellmate cry as I sprayed hot piss in his gouged out eyes. The music is so interesting in this show. There's the net. We're all just nodes on a net. Human nodes. I feel like I said that word like an alien. Human. He was jacked for a second there. I saw it. Somehow he ended up in Tron. Uh oh. This is different. How did he get out? Good morning, Master. Is that a plot master. thing? Oh, that's... Master. oh, they're all shoe related. How did I not notice that before? Oof. That episode. I don't know why it got to me like that. Something hit me wrong about that. I don't know where the problem lies. Is it with the guy or was it with me? Probably both. 
Things are getting serious in the Midnight Gospel universe. We got three episodes left. Hope to see you for episode six.